Picture this, the late fifth century, a time of great change in Europe. The once mighty Western Roman Empire has fallen, its grandeur reduced to mere fragments of a bygone era. In its wake, a multitude of Germanic kingdoms vie for power, each seeking to fill the void left by Rome's demise. The political landscape is a tapestry of instability and chaos, with shifting alliances and bloody battles. Amongst these new emerging powers, we find the Franks, a tribe known for their tenacity and resilience. At the helm of this tribe, a leader emerges, marked by his cunning and valor. His name is Clovis I. A young warrior king, he is destined not only to unite the Franks, but also to lay the foundations of what would become one of Europe's greatest nations. In this tumultuous period, a figure rises amongst the Franks, a young warrior king named Clovis I. Clovis I, a name that would come to define an era. Born in the mid-5th century, Clovis was the son of Childeric, leader of the Salian Franks, a Germanic tribe residing in the Roman province of Gaul. Upon his father's death in 481, Clovis ascended to the throne at the tender age of 15. But don't be fooled by his youth, for he was no ordinary teenager. His early reign was marked by military successes, one of the most significant being the Battle of Soissons in 486. This decisive victory over Siagrius, the last Roman official in Gaul, effectively marked the end of Roman influence in his kingdom. Clovis was not just a warrior, but a strategist. He knew the importance of alliances and marriages in consolidating his power. He married Clotilde, a Burgundian princess, who was a fervent Christian. This strategic alliance not only extended his influence, but also set the stage for his eventual conversion to Christianity, a move that would have far-reaching consequences. Clovis was a shrewd politician. He managed to secure the loyalty of the Gallo-Roman aristocracy, further expanding his power base. He also made strategic alliances with other Germanic tribes, integrating them into his growing kingdom. Clovis I, through his military prowess and political acumen, was steadily building an empire. A king's conversion, a kingdom's transformation. Enter Clovis I, a king renowned for his military prowess and strategic acumen, who in the midst of his reign, made a decision that would forever alter the course of his kingdom and the history of France. In a dramatic turn of events, Clovis I chose to convert to Christianity. This was no mere personal choice. It was a strategic move, a masterstroke that served multiple purposes. Firstly, it helped consolidate his power. The kingdom of the Franks, which he ruled, was a melting pot of various tribes and factions. By adopting Christianity, the religion of the majority of his subjects, he managed to unify these diverse groups under one banner. Secondly, his conversion gained him the goodwill of the Gallo-Roman population. These were the people who were already living in Gaul before the Franks arrived. They were Christians and viewed Clovis's conversion as a sign of acceptance and respect for their culture and beliefs. Lastly, by becoming a Christian king, Clovis I was able to make allies in other Christian kingdoms. This was a crucial advantage, particularly in the Battle of Vouillé in 507. Here, he defeated the Visigoths, a rival Germanic tribe, and greatly expanded his territory. Clovis I, a pagan warrior king, had become a Christian ruler of a rapidly expanding kingdom. Clovis I, a king whose legacy still echoes through the ages. His reign, spanning from the late 5th to early 6th centuries, was a pivotal period in the history of what would eventually become France. Clovis I's strategic alliances, military victories, and wise policies laid the groundwork for the future Frankish kingdom. The unification of several Frankish tribes under one banner, the conversion to Christianity, and the establishment of Paris as his capital, all of these were part of Clovis's grand vision. His actions not only shaped the course of his kingdom, but also deeply influenced the cultural, religious, and political landscape of the region. It's no surprise then, that Clovis I is often hailed as the father of France. His legacy is one of unity, resilience, and progress. His story is woven into the fabric of French history, shaping its identity and direction. Clovis I, a warrior, a king, a founder, the father of what we now know as France. Please like and subscribe to the channel.